Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Michael Hartley with Action Coach. What needs to pivot in my business, kickstart your day, get you refocused, because business is changing daily right now. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to What Needs to Pivot in Business. This morning, we're going to be talking specifically about leadership. In fact, this whole next few sessions are going to be all on leadership and what needs to pivot in your leadership in your business. Uh, and when we look at all this kind of stuff, uh, if you're not connected with us, please get connected uh, because we're always going to start with mindset. Your mindset must shift every single day. It must be in the right spot because if it's not in the right spot, then how can you properly lead? How can you properly move you and your business forward if your mindset isn't correct? So what are the things that you need to do to build a strong mindset? Your consistent rituals, your daily routine, what are those kind of things that you need to focus on being consistent in, in your business? What does that actually look like? Learning and growing. What are the gaps in knowledge? Right now is the best time when you're stuck at home to be focused on you. What are the gaps that you need to be learning? And, and candidly, now, and right now, right now is not the time to have ego. Right now is not the time to have an I know attitude. Right now is the time to say, you know what? I need to be the constant student, the forever learner. What do I need to grow in and learn in right now? This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for your business. Maybe you need to restructure how things are going or maybe you needed that reset button. What, does the, what are the things in your business that use this as an opportunity or for your personal life? More time at home. You know, it takes 30 to 66 days to build a new routine. And so everyone coming out of this will have a brand new routine that they will have. What are those things that actually need to maintain? What are those things that need to pivot? Small wins every single day, potentially every single hour, celebrating them. And not just saying them, but truly celebrating the wins. You have to focus on the positive and what you want. And again, I've said this over and over. It's not about ignoring what's going on. It's about focusing on what we do want. And sometimes you just got to turn the, the, the TV off because sometimes no news is good news. What I'll share with you here is if you're a business owner, maybe you need to be focused on what are the business news items that I need to be focused on right now. Things like the, um, the stimulus package that just you know, was approved on Friday. Understanding what my business needs to do right now and make sure that I'm on the, on the list to receive the money. And how do I do that? What are the forms I need? There's a handful of them. So, you know, knowing those kind of things may be important. So very first thing that we must pivot is our mindset. Daily rituals, daily routine, your team in a consistent routine, not just you. We're not just talking about you. We're talking about everyone in your sphere of influence, your friends, your family, your team, your, the other business owners you may know, making sure every single person starts the day the right way. How do you need to be more positive? What's, what kind of mindset do you need to be to focus on being more positive every single day? When you look at the two most popular brands in the entire world, they sell happiness. One of them is an entertainment business in Disney, and one of them sells hamburgers in McDonald's, and they both sell on happiness. How interesting is that? A clown has nothing to do with the hamburger, and yet that's why they chose it. So you have to focus on your mindset first and foremost. Now, leadership. There are 19 different things to focus on in pivoting into a virtual leader. We're going to go through three or four every single morning over the next few episodes. So leadership, very first thing we need to pivot in leadership in virtual leadership. First one, leadership first, location second. It's first and foremost about the leadership itself. How do you guide and lead people? How do you make sure each individual in the business is who they need to be, how they need to be, that they're good? Tasks come second. First and foremost, it's about leading. Setting the vision of where we're going and then helping the team identify the path needed to get there. Timeless principles of leadership don't change. How we do it does. So when we're talking about how often you need to be you know, having individual conversations or group conversations with your team, those type of things, if anything, they just increase. They don't decrease, they increase. And we'll, we'll kind of walk through why here in a minute. Four common questions that remote leaders ask themselves. How do we know people are really working? First and foremost, this is why systems should manage people 
and you should manage the systems because leadership is not about the tasks. So when you ask yourself, how do I know if people are actually still working? That tells me that there's an opportunity in systems in the business. Are people getting enough social interaction? You know, because of, you know, being quarantined at a house, social interaction has reduced. And for some that's totally okay. And for some that's a major problem. So you have to give opportunities to the team to leverage as much or as little as they want on how to get more social interaction. Right now, social distancing is a physical, physical thing. It should not be an emotional thing. So how do you leverage FaceTime or Zoom or you know, GoToMeeting or Skype or Duo? You know, how do you leverage these different platforms to help increase the social interaction that you and your team have? Are we getting good feedback when we need to consider options? Going back to the six keys to a winning team, the very sixth one is 100% involvement and inclusion. So how do you keep your team involved and included on certain aspects of the business? How do you make sure that you're getting good feedback? Well, you, again, you have to lead them on how to do that. What does your communication process look like as a virtual leader? And candidly, virtual leading is nothing new. It's just something new that might, you know, potentially to you. It's been around for a very long time. Can we be as effective as we were when we were co-located, meaning we, we were similar, when we were in similar locations, you know, an office, and I could just walk to your desk and say something. What I'll share with you here is it's something interesting. So I've been leading virtual teams for the better part of my entire adult career. And as someone who had uh, over 50 people reporting to me uh, in a state thousands of miles away, when you understand how to effectively lead virtually, and you build a team around you who engages in that way and you just teach them how to, and for some it'll take longer, for some it'll be pretty instant, you can actually become more effective because studies have shown that when someone works from home a day and a half out of every week or every two weeks, they become more effective. Other studies have shown that when people work from home, they do more work because it's always in front of them. So the, the answer to that one is absolutely yes. It's just, the, it's just a matter of making sure that you're leading them and giving them the right tools to work virtually. That's rule one. Rule two, in virtual leadership, leading remotely requires you to lead differently. Again, the how. 80% of white collar managers have at least one direct report in a different location. So again, this isn't something new to leadership. It's just maybe something new to you. So there are two major repercussions for leaders. The methods of communication that enable them to succeed in the past have definitely changed. The notion of a leader's sense of isolation is no longer simply emotional. First one. So your communication plan, if you don't have a communication in your business, if you don't have a communication plan in your business, first and foremost, you should. And then if you did, then maybe it needs to be tweaked. Because when we look at communication in your business, there must be a systematic approach on letting the team know this is the type of, of communication that happens through each type of platform. And because there's no longer, you know, I can just walk up to you and talk to you, well, then we need to increase the level of communication in other areas. So let's talk about this. You have different platforms like Slack, like Band, who offer a way to have like one spot for all like, you know, text type chat like communications. You have things like email and text message and phone calls that are more direct to individuals. And then you have things like video calls that are applicable for both individual and team. So you have some communication platforms that are better for overall team communication and some that are better for you know individual you may also look at what's the time frame so if you need an answer right now this isn't like i need an answer in the next 30 seconds then here's how you communicate it's a phone call type thing if we need a response within the next two hours maybe it's a text message or a direct message if you're using you know a band or slack type app for team communication if it's team-wide, if it truly needs to be team-wide or if you're sharing a win of the business, then this is how you do it. And if it's something that is, you know, in the next two or three days, we need to have a dialogue around, then this is how you communicate. And if it's a team meeting, this is how we're going to do it. So it's a matter of outlining what that system is for your business and then putting it in place and communicating it properly. So you have to have a communication system in your business to be able to enable successful communication, which again, 
Communication is the response you get. So if you're not receiving the response that you're expecting or intending, then you need to shift either you or the system. You can't expect others to receive what you want them to receive if you're not communicating it in a way that they can receive it with how or who they are. You have to take ownership of that one. The notion of a leader's sense of isolation, you know, as a leader in a business, uh, it's been proven statistically, the two most isolated or uh, lonely jobs in the world are business owner and pastor or minister. How interesting is that? Primarily because you're unable to share what's really going on with your team or with other individuals. So you have to make sure that you have a network of individuals that you can share with, whether that is a coach, whether that is, uh, you know, another business owner and you create a small group, you know, like a, a small network kind of thing, power group, whatever that is for you. Because it's no longer going to, it, isolation is no longer just emotional. It's all, also physical now. And so you have to kind of spread your, your walls a little bit outside of where you're physically at now. So that's the second rule of leadership that must pivot. Then we get to, uh, oh, and the act of leadership itself has not changed. So again, going to the principles of leadership and stuff like that, leadership in and of itself hasn't shifted. It's just how we do it, the platform in which we use, how we communicate, things like that. We need to do the same things, but in different ways with a different set of tools. Kind of walk through that. Your set of tools are right in front of you. So now it's just a matter of saying, okay, what are the right tools for us in this moment to leverage as a team? And again, some of these things we may continue, some of them we may stop. It's just a matter of saying, okay, realistically for the next six weeks, four weeks, this is life. So what do we need to do? And for those watching this on YouTube, regardless of when you're watching it, what things in your business could be led virtually and what things should be led virtually. You will find efficiencies in your team when you start to do that. Third rule. Working remotely changes interpersonal dynamics. Being seen is critical to leadership. So you have to make sure that you are being seen in front of your team, whether that is a quick chat in the morning, whether that is a 30 second video once a week, regardless of what it is and regardless of how big or small your team is, you have to be consistently in front of them one way or another. Virtual communication changes the interpersonal communication. We lose face to face and nonverbal. So Leveraging more video is going to be really important. Just sending a text or an email no longer will cut it. Those things that you know, normally I could just shoot an email out and it would be fine because we're no longer physically in person. I have to send additional things so that way they can see my body language, they can hear the tone in my voice. Being positive and things like that are super important to your leadership right now. You got to ensure that your message is easily understood. Just thinking that somebody's going to understand it no longer cuts it. You have to make sure that it is step by step. Here's one, two, three. And again, communication is the response you get. So you have to be able to, you have to make sure that it's easily understood for them. Find other ways to receive critical cues from your audience and your team. We use, we use uh, Zoom a lot for our team calls. And so I'm, asking for participation during specific parts of the conversation, of the meeting, using the chat features and stuff like that. Understanding how to use it, uh, you know, I was leading a team uh, a couple of days ago. When, because we must leverage technology, you must understand the technology or someone on your team must understand the technology because technology can become a barrier unless you understand it. So either you are the most technologically you know, uh, advanced person that you know should probably run the team meetings, the, the technical aspect of it, so that way you, if that's not you, can truly lead and guide throughout the process. And the fourth one for today, use technology as a tool, not a barrier. We actually just kind of hit on that one. So uh, don't let it become a barrier. Make sure that you understand the different gears of how to remotely lead your business. First one is the largest one, leadership and management gear. This is the basic fundamentals of leading behaviors. So again, management is about tasks. Leadership is about behaviors and shifting one point of culture, one behavior, one routine at a time. It's not about here's the four or five, six things that we need to be doing. It's about here's the one or two. 
Let's get really good at those one or two, and then we'll move forward from there. So this, this first one is the biggest gear out of all of them. It's about shifting and leading through behaviors and routines. The second one, tools and technology. The most important when leading remotely and oftentimes the, the top one that leaders are most hesitant in because they don't understand it or haven't worked through it this way before. So we have to make sure that you and your team and anyone else on your team who's in, the, in, a, in a leadership role also understands how to properly move forward. Because again, it's not just about you. If you have uh, executive levels, if you have general managers, if you have vice presidents in your business, you must make sure that they are adequately properly set up to work through these three levels as well, these three gears in the you know, remote leadership model. And then finally, skills and impact or effect is another way to say that. Often one, you know, this is often the one that can cause the biggest problems. So again, if you have a team that you must lead virtually and you are not solid at number two, well then maybe have someone else do the third one, which is the skill set side of this whole thing. Making sure that your team knows how to do their jobs remotely is going to be important and making sure that you have, again, a communication system in place to help guide them throughout the process. So these are the first four rules of 19 that we're gonna go over on pivoting, on shifting to leading virtually. So now we gotta take action, right? So what are the two things that you're gonna pivot in your leadership style, in your leadership of doing business and things like that, and then by when? And if you have questions, type them in. Uh, we'll have a couple minutes here at the end to help answer anything that, that if you have questions or, or thoughts or whatever, you can send it directly to me. You can send it to the whole group. So first and foremost, what are two things you're going to pivot based on these first four? What are they going to be? Maybe it's cadence. Maybe it's pace. Maybe it's your style, making sure that you're still shifting behaviors, making sure you still have a routine. Maybe it's the, on the technology side, maybe you don't have a communication system for virtual, you know, virtual leading. Leadership at a different pace, in a different platform. Maybe you need to put those things in place. What are the two things you're going to pivot in your leadership and by when? The, the task of, leader, of the leader is to get people from where they are to where they have not been. This is why we say leadership is not about tasks, it's about behavior, it's about the person, it's about the individual, making sure they are who they need to be to then do the tasks that you need them to do. The task of the leader is to get their people from where they are to where they have not been. So we're going to open it up for questions and things like that. Uh, as you have them, type them in, and then we will wrap up for today. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then uh, type them into the comments and we'll make sure someone from our team gets back to you as well. So, what questions might you have? I ah, appreciate it, Chris. Place virtual communication plan in schedule, time blocked, absolutely. Your default calendar, as we put it, is extremely important because right now when you're home, it's really easy to get distracted. And when we get distracted, it takes us 23 to 45 minutes to get refocused back to where we were at. So time blocking and removing distractions. We talked about this a couple episodes ago where your physical environment dictates your routines. And so because your physical environment may have shifted, your routines may have shifted. So making sure you have the right time blocking in place and removing distractions to actually be an effective communicator and leader is super important. Uh, another question, what do you recommend for? Ah, okay. So uh, when you set up your communication uh, system, first and foremost, you're the leader, you should dictate what that is, and then you should put it out to your team for uh, involvement. So what do you guys think it should be and things like that? Now you as the leader and as the owner get to make the choice of which feedback you incorporate, and which, you, which ones you don't, you want some input though. Once it's there, then you send it out to the team. 
you just make sure they're aware of it and then you can move forward from there. Good question. Any other questions for today? Awesome. So I do this is a, a great kickstart to your day. We're going to go through leadership over the next few episodes. Uh, uh, I ask that you invite at least one other person to this. And if you haven't uh, been a part of this every single week, they're all on YouTube. They get posted by 9 p.m. every single day on the day they re are recorded. They're all tw about 20 minutes long, so you can dive into them there. And uh, I'm excited to walk you through additional leadership uh, rules as we pivot business holistically to virtual leadership moving forward. I'm Dr. Michael Hartley. I'm here to elevate business, enhance your lifestyle, and that's all for now. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye for now.